In today's project diary, I will teach you when and how to harden your plants off. Hi guys, welcome to Project Diaries. Now today I want to do a video, hopefully to try and stop you making a big mistake this year. Now I don't know if you've noticed from my video uploads, that the beginning of spring was more like summer. Everything was really boiling, everything was really hot, so I planted loads of seeds and then all of a sudden it felt like winter again and we've even had a frost. So the seedlings are really taking a while to, to grow and germinate. Um, but all the other ones uh, are ready to transplant. Now before you transplant, you really want to make sure that you look at your um, weather forecast, you don't want any signs of really cold weather, uh, any signs of frost or anything like that. And you need to do something called hardening off. Now I can hear a lot of you giggling already. This is a kid friendly channel, it's not like that. Hardening off is basically uh, acclimatizing your plants to the outside and it's something you need to do because otherwise they'll go into shock. Now I just want to show you here on this pepper plant, I don't know if it comes up on the camera properly, but you can see the, there's yellowing of the leaves on the inside and this is because it's it's just stressing out. Now like I've been showing in my other videos where you know I've been wearing a woolly hat and, and jumpers and a coat last week, um, I'm back to wearing a t-shirt outside. So these fluctuating, temp, uh, fluctuating temperatures just put the plant into a bit of a shock and you know you can't put a jacket on a on a plant so you, you want to do something called hardening off and today's video i'm going to show you how to do it so let's go so before i get into it i really hope i'm not going to get a copyright strike on this i've just noticed that my garden uh, my neighbor's playing uh, music in the garden and so this this video might get taken down but you get your seedlings or your little plants here and all you need to do is just take them outside now i'm just going to put them over here so all you need to do Get that framed up nicely. Now all you need to do is leave these in a nice spot for an hour on the first day. Uh, now all you do is just get these used to the, the weather. Now obviously it's a really nice beautiful sunny day today so these are going to love the sunshine. Uh, so once you get used to them um, being out for one hour you then take them back indoors or into the shed or wherever you were growing them before. And then in the second day you do uh, two hours outside and then so on and so forth so you do three hours on the third day four hours on the fourth day and go all the way up to a week until they've been out for seven hours um, and then they will just get acclimatized to being outside and also if there's a bit of wind and stuff it'll help them um, get a little bit stronger and, and boost the root system um, so and then you want to make sure before you, you plant these out you really want to make sure that the soil temperatures are on a really nice warm temperature you don't want to make sure that, that you want to make sure they're not cold because again they're going to be into shock and once they're in the ground you can't and bring them in backwards and forwards. So the best place for you to put your plants at this stage are in cold frames. Now these are perfect because you can regulate the temperature really easy and just open the door up and down for like one hour a day and it's a lot easier to use these. It's also good to give your plants a really good watering. This will stop them drying out and really minimize any more shock. They also come in all shapes and sizes and they're really ideal if you can manage to get hold of one. If you'd like to get them on Amazon, I will leave some links in the description box below. But I don't have the luxury of having a cold frame at Grandad's yet. I do plan on building one in the future, so don't forget to subscribe. But in the meantime, I'm just going to use the pallets for that project as a raise for these plants. Now it's a really good idea to keep your plants off the ground at this point. This will stop them having easy access for slugs and snails and getting attacked by pests. You also want them to be in light but not direct sunlight because that can burn the leaves. And as I said, a slight breeze is fine, but you do also want to protect these from strong winds because it can break them. High winds will also stress the plant out, which you really don't want at this stage. I like to start these around sunset or on a cloudy day, and that will ensure that the high temperature of the sun won't scorch the leaves. It will also allow them to be climatized for cooler evening temperatures once you plant them out. Now if you see this video too late and you've put all your seedlings out already, it's still not too late because you can use fleece but depending on the space that you've got, it can work out really costly. At a push, you can use newspaper if you really get an unexpected frost, or if you've been saving all of your recycled bottles, it's a good idea just to cut the base off and create a mini greenhouse like this. It's also a really good idea to keep the lids because you can take them off on really warm days and put them back on on really colder days. Now, not all plants are the same and some can tolerate colder weather. So here's a list of very hardy vegetables. Plants like asparagus, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, peas, potatoes and turnips can all tolerate a lot lower temperatures and it's a good idea to start hardening these off between four and six weeks before your last frost date. 
Plants like snap peas, sweet corn and tomatoes will struggle or even die with the frost so definitely check your frost dates. So these will need to be hardened off either on or after your last frost date. Many vegetables like beets, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, celery, parsnips and radishes really don't mind a light frost and these can be hardened off between two and three weeks before your last frost date. But if you're growing things like beans, cucumbers, eggplant or aubergines, okra, peppers, any types of squash, sweet potatoes or melons, it's a good idea to harden these off a week or two after your last frost date just to make sure you don't get caught out. It's also a good idea to try and harden these off a little bit longer than you would all the other plants and maybe over around two week period. So that's basically how you have to harden your plants off, especially if the weather's really fluctuating like it is this spring. It's, it's absolutely crazy. I'm probably going to be wearing a jacket in my next video. But uh, yeah, let's go back into the shed anyway. So we're back in the shed and hopefully my neighbours singing didn't get picked up by the mic. But uh, I'm going to try and shoot lots of videos today. But uh, again, it's one of the problems I've got filming Project Diaries. You don't get to see that often. Uh, but hopefully today's video has helped you learn about hardening off your plants. It's a really good idea to do this because you don't want them to go into transplant shock. Because if they go into quite a lot of shock and there's a frost, you might kill your plants. And you really want them to be as healthy as possible so you can get as much uh, fruit throughout the year. So uh, again, like the reason why I'm doing this video is because um, I've checked the weather report and it looks like we're gonna have a really cold spell next week um, so I'm not even gonna put these in in the uh, the raised beds yet I'm just gonna allow them to to sit here for another week or two and I, I think growing is gonna be pretty slow this year but we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and hopefully that that really warm spell is gonna come back through so check your weather report make sure your soil temperatures are nice and warm before you plant your, your um, seedlings out and just make sure that you've done the, the hardening off section uh, but if you've liked today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe Wait for this one. <laughs> I can't win today uh, but just make sure that you've subscribed there's a lot of people saying that they've been unsubscribed for some reason I don't know whether that's within YouTube or something so definitely make sure that you've subscribed and click the bell button for notifications anyway that's enough from me today take care of yourself and good luck growing this year I'll see you in the next one take care if you'd like to keep up to date on all of my future releases, click the subscribe button here. Here are some links to some of my other videos. And if you tried this or any other project, I'd love to see your progress, so please join my Facebook gardening group where thousands of people are sharing photos and ideas daily. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.